going gluten-free, sugar-free, and dairy-free. We are joined by author of where do I start? Uh, author uh, Victoria Ye, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for joining us here. We're actually taking a, a, a look at your book right there, Where Do I Start? Big question mark. It's so, so true because I'm trying to do this too. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it seems daunting, but once you look into it and once you know the substitutions for everything, it's okay. It's not that hard after all. Exactly. A lot of people think it's tough, mm -hmm. but if you keep it simple, you know, stick to a lot of whole foods, fresh fruits and veggies. Yeah. And then when you venture out of it, if you know how to make substitutions to your own recipes, yeah. then you're really set. Well, let's begin with why someone would want to cut these types of foods out of their uh, out of their diet. I mean, I believe a lot of us have intolerances that we don't even know about. So true. I intuitively just have a feeling I shouldn't be eating wheat, so I just cut out the gluten foods. Um, but there are people that actually, it's a serious problem, right? Gluten? Exactly. So the key really, like you hit on the, hit the nail on the head right there is being in tune with your own body. So there's about 1% of the Canadian population that has celiac disease, and that's an autoimmune disorder where your immune system gets confused and attacks your own intestinal lining when you eat gluten. And another 15% of Canadians actually have an intolerance to wheat. So that can, you know, those problems can manifest in a lot of different ways. Acne! <laughs> Acne, yeah. <laughs> um, congestion. I used to get a lot of sinus infections, headaches, stomach aches, uh, miscarriages, infertility, and oh. even some learning disorders. Wow, even learning disorders. I'm, I'm just thinking also I have so many friends that have quit this type of food because of bloating and all kinds of, yeah. Stomach yeah, issues. people with celiac disease will actually experience a lot of bloating and diarrhea as yeah. well. So if people have some chronic difficulties of any sort, chances are it's dietary. Definitely. And the best way to find out if you're allergic to something? I would say um, you can get blood tests and stomach biopsies and all this stuff, but the easiest way for me is to cut it out. So cut out common allergens like gluten, dairy, sugar, corn, soy mm -hmm. for about three to six weeks. Wow. A hundred percent, and if you feel better, then it's uh, probably one of those things. Wow, but that's like, what's left? <laughs> I think, I hear you at home going, well, what the <laughs> heck is left, Victoria? But I is there a lot left? It's daunting for some people when they find these things out, they have certain things that are the allergens or things they can't eat. Well, yeah. And then, because let's face it, some of the products, I know it's getting better, are pretty expensive too. And mm. it's, a, it's a whole formal education. And some of it can be quite intimidating. So probably that's where your book will come in quite handy for everybody. Exactly. And actually my book was basically a summary of my personal journey over the eight, right. uh, past eight years where I learned how to sort of reverse engineer my recipes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. learn how to make substitutions to my own family recipes. That's and really, great. To, you know, if I have a lot of sweet potatoes in my fridge, I can just Google a sweet potato recipe and then be Absolutely. able to switch it up. Love it. Well, what are we making today? So today I'm going to show you guys how to make a gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, and also yeast-free <laughs> raisin loaf. And Good does old. it taste like sawdust? No, like most gluten-free foods? <laughs> it doesn't taste like sawdust, so it's actually tasty. Actually, a yeah. lot of my guests that come to my house, they mm -hmm. always eat gluten-free, and their comment is always, this tastes so good, it's just like, you know, the normal food, only I don't have that full and bloated feeling afterwards. Really? Awesome. That's incredible. All right, let's begin. Okay, so we can start with two eggs here, mm -hmm. and I will put you to work. Oh, really? So, okay, I love you it. Aha. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. You can have those blender, two eggs. Travel. Just flip that switch there. Okay. Um, now, eggs <laughs> give a nice uh, fat content to gluten-free recipes. And uh, gluten-free foods tend to be very crumbly and dry sometimes, mm -hmm. so that really helps with it and helps it rise as well. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go faster? No, Make that's it. good. So once those eggs are beaten, then mm -hmm. we're going to add the liquid ingredients. So I have, um, uh, I have a quarter cup of grapeseed oil here, and this is a substitution for butter, actually. So this is how I made it dairy-free. Could you use olive oil as well, or does it end up tasting olive -y? like if you get the light-tasting stuff? I personally prefer to use extra virgin olive oil, so yep. I'll only use it in recipes that are savory. Mm, but okay. recipes that are sweet, then grape I'll stick to grapes. has no taste at all. No, it's I a very use it as flavor. a substitute in cakes and such. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a quarter cup of rice milk, and rice milk is a great substitution for cow milk. Mm -hmm. um, it has a natural sweetness to it, mm -hmm. so it also makes up for not having refined sugar in there. There's a lot, of, very there is a lot of sugar in rice. There is, yeah. Yeah. there is, yeah. It's really, really tasty. And actually, I substituted rice milk for almond milk, but now I'm finding out I have intolerances to that. To almond milk? Almonds almond milk too. actually has Don't soy get up in, in the it. morning. I know, like, what? 
I'm, I'm intolerant to everything. I can't eat anything these days. But you're pure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that has to do with our name thing we yeah, were talking about in the beginning. <laughs> what was that? This is a quarter cup of maple syrup. Ooh. Throwing down the Canadian flavor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That gives it a and nice a Jamaican accent. Yeah, a little bit of maple leaf flavor. You have to be careful not to substitute too much maple syrup or honey in your recipes because they can burn easily in the oven. Yeah. So oh. I usually try to stay to about a quarter cup or a half a cup. Good to know. Great. And, and then, so the next mm -hmm. I'm going to do is this is three quarters of cup of brown rice flour, three quarters of cup of sweet rice flour, mm -hmm. and two teaspoons of baking powder. Fantastic. So if you were to just put brown rice flour in this recipe, your bread will turn out as a big lumpy rock. Right. And Very it will harsh. be boring. <laughs> yeah, it'll be awful because gluten has a few different characteristics to it. So. Mm -hmm. It's a binding aid, it help, helps things stick together. Yeah. And it's also a leavening aid, it helps things rise. And brown mm. rice flour, because it doesn't have gluten in it, then it's not going to make up for that. So it'll be crumbly or it won't rise and it'll be very mm -hmm. dense. We'll continue this maybe through the break, this part, Great. because I'm sure viewers <laughs> yeah. are like, stop it with that <laughs> machine already. Stick of the sound. All right. You know what? Um, during the commercial break, if you must take a look at the book, it's at glutenfreeliving.ca. That's where you can order it and uh, learn a whole bunch about living gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, which I think is kind of the way to go. I think it's really, I think we'd all feel much better if we just stuck to fruits and vegetables. Anyway, um, when we come back, we're going to finish making this, uh, this raisin bread that's Apparently, I really hope it's going to be as delicious as Victoria <laughs> says. It does look really good. Stick with us. See you after the break.